to form Saudi Arabia. The historian David Frumkin wrote, the British believed that Islam could be manipulated by buying its leadership. Guess what they paid Ibn Saud? A paltry 5,000 pounds. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the founder of Saudi Arabia. Ibn Saud liked the unholy alliance his forefather had waged with Abdul Wahab, as Wahhabism gave religious justification to what his forces were already doing, which is plundering, raping, killing the poor people of Saudi Arabia. It was a barren desert until oil was discovered in 1938 by the US controlled Caltex, making billionaires of just one family in Saudi Arabia. By royal decree, future kings could only be from that one family. That was easy. For starters, the founder Saud had 22 wives, 45 oh, declared shame. sons, thousands of grandchildren, shame. and how many da da daughters? Heck, who keeps track of daughters in? Saudi Arabia! Luxurious chateaus, sprawling palaces, grand yachts, gluttonous parties with drugs and prostitution are the hallmark of this Muslim royal family of Saudi Arabia. However, regular Saudis have to force to strictly follow Wahhabism as enforced by the dreaded mutawas of Saudi Arabia. Wahhabism, not Islam, is the religion of Saudi Arabia. Wahhabism, not Islam, is the religion of Saudi Arabia. Avamiya, the town of Shahid Nimr, destroyed, 20 killed, 20,000 displayed, showed a flicker of resistance and to the, uh, to the atrocities committed by their own government of Saudi Arabia. Pakistan, WikiLeaks, US government cables indicate $100 million going to the Diobandis and the Ahle Hadith for things like targeted Shia killings coming from the Gulf donors and Saudi Arabia. Nigeria, Sheikh Zakzaki tortured, his followers murdered in the Zaria massacre by President Buhari and his military thugs, all because the Sheikh spoke out against their masters in Saudi Arabia. Bahrain, for decades the ruling Khalifa family had suppressed the people, acquired $40 billion worth of land for themselves, like paying one dinar for the iconic harbor area. The people revolted during the Arab Spring, but their peaceful protests were in the Pearl Roundabout were crushed by the foreign tanks of Saudi Arabia. Syria, tell me, even if you hate Assad, would you join up with the Al Nusra wing of the ISIS and Israel just to unseat him? Yep, you would if you were. Saudi Arabia. Qatar, despite a stifling blockade, had a 3% growth and a whopping 70% increase in new companies moving in last year. So the policy that really backfired was that of Saudi Arabia. Palestine, the world was aghast as Israeli snipers surrounding the open air prison called Gaza shot protesters with live ammunition even though they were far from the fence. While visiting New York City, someone told the Palestinians to shut up and stop complaining. And that was Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. Yemen, schools bombed. Hospitals bombed, Shame. doctors without borders bombed, wedding and funerals bombed. Worst of all, cluster bombs dropped in the marketplaces by the jets of Saudi Arabia. Humanitarian crisis created by in, in, intentional targeting of food resources, bombing ports of Hudaida, agricultural lands, even fishing boats by the pilots of Saudi Arabia. UN stated over 10,000 Yemenis dead. 80% in need of emergency assistance. UNICEF, one child dying every 10 minutes. World Health Organization, cholera endemic affecting 1 million. And therefore, Amnesty and Human Rights Watch have said, war crimes have been committed by the government of Saudi Arabia. Iran has been blamed for Yemen. But the 2015 United Nations Security Council report, Carnegie Center, Bruce Rydell of Brookings Institute, U.S. analyst Christopher Boyce have all stated Iran's role was small, it was mostly due to Saudi Arabia. Wahhabism, not Islam, is the religion of Saudi Arabia. Wahhabism, not Islam, is the religion of Saudi Arabia. Social media has been huge in exposing Saudi crimes, mm. but Russian bots have been used to prevent negative Twitter hashtags from going viral. Italian hacking company Galileo was hired to spy on Saudi citizens by downloading bugs onto the smartphone by their own government of Saudi Arabia. Activists like Raya Badawi for blogging, juveniles like Ali Nimr for tweeting, were tortured in jails while there were 138 executions just last year alone in Saudi Arabia. And yet,
yet serving its second term in the United Nations Human Rights Council is Saudi Arabia. Nine million migrant workers covered by the official term kafala and are imprisoned in a modern day slave camp called Saudi Arabia. And yet elected as a deputy member of the International Labour Organization was Saudi Arabia. Vogue magazine featured a glamorous princess behind the wheel of a car as evidence of reforms while avoiding any mention of the 11 female activists who were recently just arrested and may face death sentence in Saudi Arabia. And yet serving as a member of the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women is a country with the worst record on women's rights, and that is Saudi Arabia. If Saudis are so bad, how come they are a close ally, huh? Simple, they have tons of money, oil, plus all, they follow all our orders like an ugly puppy. Therefore, they are a beloved, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudis are the largest importer of arms in the world from the United States. 2016 Nobel Prize winning President Obama proposed a $115 billion arms deal. 2017 Nobel Peace Prize expecting President Trump finalized 110 and a future $240 billion arms deal with Saudi Arabia. Just examine the U.S. arms used in Yemen alone. Saudis got the F-15 fighters and Apache helicopters from Boeing laser-guided bombs and tow missiles from Raytheon, Black Hawk choppers from United Technology, cluster bombs from Textron, M1 Abram tanks from General Dynamics. Saudi jets were able to refuel in, in mid-air thanks to the KC-130J fuel tankers supplied by Lockheed Martin as they took off from the aircraft carrier Theodore Roosevelt made by Newport News Shipbuilding. In short, ladies and gentlemen, if we remain silent, all of us will have blood on our hands because the government makes these deals for money with the government of Saudi Arabia. Al-Baqir, Al-Baqir, Rebel Al-Baqir, 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 Next chant is Mohammed bin Salman. There's a new cowboy in the desert town. A 32-year-old prince calls. He is worth three billion dollars. Owns 300 million dollar chateau Louis XIV. Bought a 500 million dollar yacht on the spot while vacationing in the south of France was the $450 million mystery bidder on the world's expensive uh, painting, Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, and he's none other than Muhammad bin Salman. He threw an $8 million party in the Maldives with performers like Rihanna, Shakira, Jennifer Lopez, and Pitbull. But that's not all. Tell me, would you take up for a party like that after you've just ordered the bombing of the, the poorest country in the Middle East, Yemen? Yep, you would if you were. Muhammad bin Salman. Part of MBS's proposed Vision 2030 plan is the Red Sea Resort, where gambling, bikinis, alcohol will be allowed. That'll be fine for some, but for the hypocrisy. Last I heard, the person who claims to be the protector of Islam's holy site is the father of the same Muhammad bin Salman. Dramatic reforms for women. They can drive. Whoop de doo. It is 2018, for God's sake. Suddenly, all the feminists are grateful and satisfied with. Machiavelli, Macbeth, and Al Capone would be jealous of the moves he made to take down his potential opponents. Those poor billionaires were jailed in a dump called the Rich Carlton until they tortured and coughed up $100 billion and re pledged their allegiances to. Muhammad bin Salman. Wait, wait, isn't it wonderful? When they were released, they were able to be driven to the hospital by their wives thanks to the driving reforms by. Wahhabism, not Islam, is the religion of Saudi Arabia. It was a beauty. Shady Lyceum trees with leaves rustling in the breeze, a magnificent facade, an imposing dome. It was a cemetery, a heavenly abode called 
Prophet's family, his companions, other revered Sunni and Shia personalities, soldiers of Islam, and regular Saudi citizens were buried in Jannatul Baqi. In 1802, they attacked Karbala, massacred 5,000 Shias, and plundered many shrines, including that of Imam Hussein, setting the stage for a similar fate for Jannatul Baqi. King Saud in 1925 ordered his mercenaries of Ikhwan to destroy Jannatul Baqi. Ironically, when they became a liability, the same Ikhwan were massacred by the same King Saad, and this was four years after the destruction of Jannatul 98% of the Saudi heritage, both Sunni and Shia, has been destroyed. We are protesting against all the heritage destruction, including and especially that of Jannatul People question, have a protest, a Baqi protest made any difference? As a brother from Khatib once told me, what the Saudis fear more than Allah is their negative impression in the United States. So if we will take it if all we are getting is preventing a grand hide or a maniac from being built over. The Baki organization through its advocacy campaign is telling the United Nations that visitors are beaten if they mourn. Women are prevented from going to these mounds of dirt which form the graveyard called but simply building a new tomb at the site will be a hollow victory. In addition, replacing the values of the current tyrannical regime with those of the martyrs is what we call rebuilding.